हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू पंजाब जीके सीरीज विद डॉक्टर विवेक राणा विल बी टेकिंग अप बायोडाइवर्सिटी ऑफ पंजाब सेक्शन टुडे सो दिस सीरीज इज मेनली एम्ड एट क्रैकिंग द प्रीलिम्स पार्ट ऑफ पीसीएस एग्जामिनेशन जनरल स्टडीज पेपर सो द थीम फॉर टुडे व्हिच वी आर टेकिंग अप इन दिस बायोडाइवर्सिटी सेक्शन इज क्वाइट इंपॉर्टेंट थीम व्हिच इज विद यू कैन ऑलरेडी वॉच फ्रॉम द फैक्ट दैट यूपीएससी ऑलमोस्ट एवरी अल्टरनेट ईयर फ्रेम्स अ कपल ऑफ क्वेश्चंस फ्रॉम दिस सेक्शन सो वी विल बी टेकिंग अप रामसर साइट्स ऑफ पंजाब because ramsar convention we all know was held in iran in way back in 1971 it came into force in 1975 and india timely ratified it in 1982 and the journey of ramsar sites has been quite remarkable one for india in uh, you could say in past 2 3 years specifically we have seen the jump in the ramsar sites from 27 sites to 75 so it was a you could say an appropriate tribute to india's 75 years of independence the event which we celebrated as our amrut mahotsav so but in this series we'll be focusing mainly on the punjab section so that you could uh, just update or make quick revision of themes associated with it so uh, for a start i would like to define what wetland is and then we will discuss all these six specific sites of punjab because some of you might be beginners who might not know what exactly is a wetland why its conservation is important for uh, you could say northern states like punjab haryana or you could say jnk and uttarakhand as well so first of all uh, wetland is a you could say a transitional zone between a terrestrial and aquatic system which is saturated with uh, water or you could say it is covered by some shallow water so this is could be a rough imagination of the theme uh, in your picture but uh, from examination point of view it's always better to quote the ramsar convention definition ramsar convention had defined wetland as areas of marsh peatland or water whether temporary or artificial permanent or uh, you could say temporary with water static or flowing fresh brackish or salt including areas of marine water depth of which at low tides does not exceed 6 meters so in simple terms uh, if i have to decode this definition they are including mangroves coral reefs estuaries bays creeks lakes flood plains and what not so it is a quite a uh, flexible definition so uh, it it comes as no surprise that almost all indian states have today plethora of wetlands and it's not an exaggeration to say that all continents except antarctica have a natural wetland because once you include the flood plain lakes part every uh, other test you could say aquatic body comes into the picture so originally if we look back now let's just come to the punjab part straight away without wasting any much time so we have seen that conventionally when india used to have those 27 ramsar sites uh, in those there were just three ramsar sites so traditionally punjab was uh, you could say a front runner because lot of large states like madhya pradesh maharashtra karnataka bihar the, some of them even didn't have a single site so punjab it that in point of view had taken a stride by declaring hari ke patan way back in 1990 and it was selected as a ramsar entry in the specific year so even though we have mentioned these specific year there is no need to mug up you should be just clear about some specific feature or a district involved like in case of hari ke the, the repeated question which has been asked in upsc as well as in punjab you can look back at previous year questions it is that hari ke is confluence of two rivers and if you are from punjab you should not come as a surprise we all know that hari ke patan is situated at confluence of pyas and satluj river so the associated topic which you need to mug up is what is bari dua what is based the what is rachna dua so you can go through it and at least give a fast reading to the tributaries of indus river what are the right bank what are the left bank if you have done that part quite manageably you will be able to uh, do justice to this thing and if we come to the districts part is the taran taran is the main district in which we feel that harike is there 
also the Firozpur and Kapoorthala are also included when we cast about the Harike Patan. And the main point which you need to do additional while preparing Harike is the role of invasive species. Now this wetland is threatened due to presence of an aquatic plant called water hyacinth. Now water hyacinth has a reputation of multiplying at alarming late once it is introduced. It's an ornamental species which becomes a menace for lot of lakes all over India and globally. And uh, one aquatic species which uh, finds difficult to survive when this water body is contaminated or some invasive species poses a challenge is a fish species which goes by the name of Hilsa. We all know the freshwater fishes and the bony fishes. Hilsa is a quite popular example. So make sure while preparing for this Harike Patan to give a, su a sufficient review of the important role of Hilsa the economic significance and also about what exactly are invasive species concepts. These are the associated themes which you need to uh, cover. And uh, this is a man-made, you could say, reservoir which uh, comes in the picture and also it is associatedly called the Rivering Wetland because just as we have mentioned, it's at confluence of Bias and Satur River. So from conservation point of view, this holds quite significant and already this site is being developed and used as an eco-tourist site. Lot of uh, persons who are avid bird watchers are visiting Harike Patan regularly and uh, Punjab government is pushing this site uh, from eco-tourism perspective. So if you are preparing for Ramsar site, this is the first site which has to be quoted irrespective of the sequence and chronology. Then coming to the second major Ramsar site of Punjab, it has been a quite historical site as well. It's the Kanjli wetland. Now, the Kanjli wetland is situated in Kapoorthala district and once Harike was declared, there was no looking back for Punjab. They knew how to get the site selected. It was one of the criteria which they follow for declaring any site as Ramsar site are that roughly 20,000 migratory birds should visit that site annually and Kanjali qualified. Though there are some uh, concerns of late that in past two, three years we have seen that there is a dip in the number and that criteria is no longer being satisfied from Kanjali wetland. So this wetland has been in news for that decline purpose, but currently it's still officially in the Ramsar plan. Now, if you are uh, doing Punjab history part uh, in detail, then you can associate this river from religious perspective as well, because we all know that a religious importance associated with Shri Guru Nanak Dev Ji. Because Kali Bain rivulet is for significance for Sikh religion, and this site has once again uh, becomes much more important due to that theme as well. So uh, uh, make sure you are clear about the Kali Bain and which exactly is the river to which Kali Bain is associated. So it's the Bias river once again because Bias is the main lifeline when it comes to the Punjab and pollution associated with Bias river is posing threat of the lake. So this topic becomes quite relevant from pollution perspective as well. We've already we have a lot of conservation programs uh, associated and uh, hopefully the river is doing well due to uh, revival. Coming to the third site, uh, once again it's a straightforward roper because currently we all know that it comes under the Rupnagar district. So roper also was declared in the same 2002 year as the third major Ramsar site of Punjab and once again it is at uh, it's a quite picturistic you could say uh, Ramsar site it is at lap of Shivaliks and lot of migratory birds annually visit year after year and once again the avid bird watchers make it a point to visit so once again uh, since Punjab topography is associated with fresh uh, water only mainly so this site is also classified as the fresh water Ramsar site because in Ramsar we have seen uh, all types of water body whether they are brackish whether they are fresh or whether they are marine are included so this is also a fresh water site because generally when 
questions are framed in such themes, they will uh, make a statement out of it. They will say all Ramsar sites of Punjab are fresh water in nature. Or they might just ask the basic question. They will mention these three Ramsar sites and, and mention the districts, whether they are correctly matched or not. So from examination point of view, you should be not only be favorable with the familiar with the Ramsar sites and their likely district, but also some associated or some interesting fact which has happened over the uh, years in the history of it. Now, uh, once the uh, uh, Indian government passed the conservation of wetland rules uh, in 2017 and states were asked to submit list of important Ramsar sites in a specific time, we have seen the, you could say, a drastic jump in Ramsar sites and Punjab once again stood up to the challenge and have uh, made rapid strides in uh, submitting the themes and already the three sites have been selected and officially declared under Ramsar Convention. So you can see carefully that it's that after 2017, it's in 2019, the remaining three sites were notified simultaneously. It was a matter of pride for India and as well as Punjab. In that year, Punjab became in 2019 the second state having the highest Ramsar site because 6 is a big number. Though currently this record is, has been sidelined because we know that Tamil Nadu and Uttar Pradesh have eclipsed uh, the, this uh, number and now we are at uh, third position. Okay, so this, that part of national level we have covered in our basic class lectures. So currently once again we need to do the paucity of time straight to the main thing. Now the Nangal, uh, you could say the wetland, when it was notified in 2020, once again it had the similar points like Ropa, it's a man-made uh, wetland, it's an artificial lake uh, uh, called Nangal and once again it satisfied the criteria of 20,000 water birds, even though uh, there are limited facts associated with Nangal, so this one is an easy nut to crack. Now, the Piaz Conservation Reserve was not a surprise element at all because we have seen, if you look at Himachal Ramsar sites, there are three sites they have, we all know there is a, a you could say, the Chandratal Lake, then they, we have Renuka Wetland and also they had Piaz. So, uh, if we look at uh, which, uh, which are distributed as Piaz River. Because the Pong Dam, uh, the main Ramsar site of Himachal uh, uh, Pradesh is situated on Bias River. So it comes as no surprise that this Bias River is indirect way associated with Kanjali, indirect way associated with Hariki, and here also they are declared in Punjab side region as a conservation reserve. Because conservation reserves are also important from the larger goal of biodiversity conservation. And uh, this Bias conservation has finally been notified rightly in 2019. Just like we saw that there were a couple of species which we have to associate. In Bias, you need to understand that in 2017, it was in news for all the right reasons because a species which was declared extinct in Punjab, the Ghadiyal, which we call the alligator, was reintroduced successfully here. Just as we have seen that a foreign species of African cheetah getting a lot of limelight because cheetah was declared extinct in India due to hunting. In similar way, Punjab also harbored Ghadiyal, but it became extinct over the years. So it was an ambitious project which has been supported by IUC and World Wildlife Fund and it made headlines. So make sure you are clear that in which uh, Ramsar site the the Ghadiyal reintroduction project is mainly associated, so answer would be the Bayas Conservation Bureau. And Ghadiyal, you need to understand, it is a species which has a narrow, you could say, snout, and it's a fish-eating species. It never attacks human beings, unlike the crocodile, which can, uh, it does not hesitate to attack any human being or animal species. So this Ghadiyal, uh, we all know Gavialis gangeticus is its scientific name, and even though uh, Punjab's state aquatic animal is the majestic Indus dolphin. And once again, we have to understand that Indus dolphin is once again associated with this very conservation reserve. So make sure you are clear about the Indus dolphin scientific name. It is Platinista because we all know the national one also is called Platinista gangetica. Here it will be called Platinistica gangetica minor. So the, because we have seen in PCS, uh, they asked about the state bird scientific name. There is already a question on the tree as well. So there is no harm in preparing while preparing this section. A little bit of extra as well. 
and the unique thing about these dolphin species are they even though they are totally aquatic they are mammal by nature whale dolphin sea cow porpoises they all fall under category of aquatic mammals and they communicate with the help of infrasonic waves so this is advanced level of communication which they are using and they are quite intelligent species even though their vision are not to develop a uh, eye and uh, you need to also understand that this ghadiyal uh, and indus dolphin facts can be asked in biodiversity conservation milestones of punjab as well so there is a overlap here so we can say from examination point of view this is a site from which a portion can be likely framed then we have last but not the least keshopur meani now we all know the keshopur the region is associated with the unique concept of community reserve the lalban and keshopur were the pioneers in community reserve program when we will be covering the second theme of biodiversity conservation in punjab we will just shed some light that what are the in situ and ex situ conservation where the theme of community reserve comes into the picture so we have prepared that theme this site is once again from that region only so the district associated with keshopur meani is the gurdaspur district so make sure you uh, come with uh, are clear with the main district part of such conservation reserve as well once again it's a natural wetland and the rivers associated here apart from bias is ravi as well so otherwise we have seen the dominance of bias river in punjab site but this is one of the site where there is ravi and bias and Bloaters, chestnut are some of the commercial plants which are associated with this specific wetland. And the community reserve part is also, if you want to add, it was declared community reserve in 2007, and it's India's one of the earliest community reserve because its community reserve is a voluntary initiative by community in which the state government declares and then wildlife warden oversee. the happening this year in upsc films also there was a portion on community reserve in which the same very facts were repeated so this is uh, what we had in punjab ramsar site so as of now there are six sites and all six are significant from punjab perspective and they are conservation of these sites is important because they act as carbon sinks they are the you could say winter resort for migratory birds because this ramsar convention was primarily created to conserve these biodiversity specifically the migratory birds because if we don't conserve their original habitat or the migratory habitat these species are eventually going to loss we have seen how siberian crane great indian bustard vultures are on verge of extinction so all other such migratory birds they need to be preserved so make sure you are clear about the broader objectives why these wetlands are to be conserved apart from that these wetlands also play a role in disaster management due to uh, the trees they bind the soil they don't allow sediments to flow so in direct way they control the flooding level they check the rise of normal water during rainfalls and also we have seen that uh, they can be a potential source for piscy culture because we have fresh water resources with minimal out inputs this can be turned into the rearing ground for different fishes like ilsa and you could get economic revenue and also they had a reputation of acting as kidneys of earth even this theme was asked in upsc prelims recently because the plants associated with this regions they help in filtering the toxic elements and they make the ecosystem less toxic and Uh, we have seen that they also check soil erosion and apart from that the some timber and other economic goods or fodder at least can be used for the livestock animals and punjab you know is a agrarian economy there is no harm in preserving such thing but the main thing which punjab seriously needs to look upon conservation of wetland is that they help in recharging our aquifers which we can say in simple terms they help in maintaining the ground water level because the minor rainfall helps in keeping the ground level uh, water a balance and we are a, a potential threat of uh, facing a water scarcity so this is a theme where this conservation of wetland becomes even more important 
and then once again we have seen that since birds are visiting here, so we can dwell these sites as potential eco-tourist sites of Punjab. Apart from religious spiritual tourism, which Punjab is already uh, in, in good lead, this could be another area in which we could get a real output. So we can uh, we cannot underestimate the unending benefits of these Ramsar sites or wetlands in general. So make sure uh, from means perspective you are clear that why uh, a wetland should be conserved, what are the threats faced by them, why their conservation is important. Because of late we have seen in previous year UPSC also in means they have just asked about the Ramsar sites there, what is their role. So this is a standard format question easy to attempt and can be asked in GS4 theme. So this is what we had to cover in the introductory lecture on biodiversity of Punjab, quite a manageable theme and if you just spend a few minutes of your precious time in memorizing these six sites, you can claim that at least you have done justice to it. But if you want to prepare as a topic as a whole, it demands a complete dedication because currently Factually, this topic is quite difficult to mug up because there are 75 Ramsar sites today and you need to understand that India in South Asia is having one of the largest number. Even though at global level, we have seen UK, Bolivia dominating headlines. But that's uh, I think more than enough for the introductory theme. So we'll be back with another biodiversity theme in next uh, lecture. So and I'll be framing one objective question as well. You can attempt them in comment section. So I hope this small introductory lecture on Ramsar sites of Punjab was a useful one to you. It helps in just re-engaging your preparation. We'll be back soon. Have a nice day. Thank you very much.